getting over that hump in the driveway is going to be tough. It'll be alright, I'm just trying not to break free. Okay. We're under tow. <laughs> You saw how we got it in here. Uh, yesterday I took this to visit my friend who helped me get this in here. And uh, it's about a mile away. It's kind of my way of getting out for a walk. When I can't walk, it's close to walking, being on this thing. Uh, anyway, starting it the last couple times made a little bit more of a racket than it should have. Um, the old starter motor, uh, one of the, the gear that engages with the flywheel broke. And it broke inside. So what I have to do is split this and it's a 1946 Ford 2N and it shouldn't be that complicated. In fact it's not that complicated and I'm gonna I'm really really curious to see the inside of it. I always have been my whole life. Uh, I grew up this is the first thing <clears throat> this is the first thing I ever drove. The second thing was a 1972 Volkswagen Beetle coincidentally but uh, I'm going to get the hood up, get all the wires, the control arms, the linkage apart and uh, I'm kind of going to go through step by step. I'll film most of it and then I don't think I'll need to separate it that much to get the gears, the broken gears out of there. I hope. Um, so I'm probably just going to leave the hood on and then uh, yeah we'll go from there. So come on. Neat. Look at that socket. Oh that is cool. Exactly like a hip. Disconnect the fuel line. Oak shavings to absorb the gasoline. Yeah. For safety. Throttle linkage here. This is the oil pressure line. Um, it, it relays the amount of oil pressure in the engine up through this little analog pipe up to this gauge. Huh. Look at that. You that is not bad at all. Holy detach. I got you going into the... What? I've got both feet working it. 100%. Why do I always swear when I'm filming an important thing? It's okay. Come on up. It's okay. We're gonna sit on the seat. It's more fun. Shivering <sighs> cold, let's get you to the warm house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna entitle this one Puppies and Excavators. <laughs> yeah, swing in anytime. I'm doing this. Hopefully, not all day. Well, that was a nice little dose of cuteness. Let's get back into this. Oh, yeah. So streamlined. Gonna go in?
So this is the front jack and I've got the tires chalked. I'm going to leave the front of the tractor stationary and that's going to prop that side up. And this is a rolling jack on a rolling stand that uh, I believe will roll a little bit with the weight of that. So, well, I hope so. And uh, I hope it doesn't roll all the way out into my car. My car can stop it. And then I'll just push it back in with my car. I'm kidding. I'm not planning on that happening. Uh, I'll have redundancies put in place. Anyway, um, yeah, I think this is going to work. So I'm going to work on getting these bolts apart and uh, pull it apart. As I'd imagine, they just pull apart because they're just amazingly not rusted at all. Just one after the other. Wow. God, that's cool. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's not really amazing. It's kind of, it's part of the design. It's the way it was uh, intended to be. Ah, the old man says I wish they made more things like this. Ah. But I do. I understand it was a different time, but why can't stuff be made to last? I know, that's a simplistic, idiotic, kind of overly puerile way of thinking, but... Uh, just a dose more of this. Let's make something that lasts forever with a little bit of maintenance. And these bolts, they just threaded right out. This has probably never been apart. Maybe, maybe not. You can see right there, that's the split. So, I gotta get that jacked up nice and tight, and I got some spikes in there to kind of direct it out of here, and then I just hope that little uh, system here holds this up. I'll have a redundancy in place just in case. Okay, well, let's just see what we got here. working extremely well. I dare say shockingly well. Boy, that's interesting. Holy moly. Can you see in there? There you are. <laughs> Old Broken Tooth McGee. So I know a minute ago I said I don't think this had been split, but I believe that yellow is newer than 1946, so I'm interested in finding out when this was split, but there's a new clutch housing, so this has been opened before. Uh, and you can tell, just the edge there, Cosmoline and whatnot, ooh, look at those studs, those are going to be fun to line up. <laughs> See that right there? Uh, I'll point it out in post. But that right there, that white, ugly bit. That's a chunk of metal that's right under there, and that needs to come out. So I'm going to take it out and hopefully find the other half. All right, all right. I've got this little uh, springy thing. If I can't get it with that, I'll kind of poke at it with this at first. So let's see if we can get, get a sight on it. Oh, that was very easy. <laughs> okay, well. That part, golly, that's definitely not old, good old steel, but that looks like, yeah, not quite half of a circle. So I gotta find the other part of this. It's in there somewhere. I hope I don't have to take this all the way apart, but if I do, then I do. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, well, that's comforting. Well, that was not that hard. Let's see if that... Well, I got all the chunks of metal out of the, uh, the bell housing there, and I think now it is time to draw them back together, and I'm going to use this beefy ratchet strap to do that. They look pretty even from here. Ok, 
Okay. Well, this is working perfectly. Oh man. I wish you'd seen that. That was cool. I just and it suckled right back into place. Well, some things are best left unseen. Load hug. <laughs> All right. Well, that is back together. God, that was easy. Way easier than I thought it was going to be. That is a pleasant surprise. Well, I let that drain overnight. Changing up the uh, transmission here. So that massive plug there, I got one more to pull. This plug has been pulled, that drained. And I'm gonna do the crankcase as well. Well, it's here, why not? Why not do it right? Your eyes don't deceive you. This is, uh, Diesel and K1 mixed together. I'm dumping about a, oh, I don't know, maybe a gallon down there. What I'd like to be able to do is run it, but I'm not really, I don't have that option. I'd like to spin the gears and everything, but uh, the reason I'm doing that is there is 70 years of uh, agri <coughs> agricultural detritus accumulated down here and uh, you know I run my finger in there it's just it looks like turkey poop it's terrible runny foul stuff mud grime sludge metal just you know a you know 70 years of just moving parts and accumulating dust and all that stuff so I'm gonna let this sit for a minute uh, unfortunately it's incredibly cold so it's not going to work as well as if it were warm, uh, but I think it'll work fine. And I'm going to run a long nozzle with a blower down there and just kind of blow stuff around. It's the best I can do, and, uh, and then I'm going to drain it out. And then I'm going to let it sit for a little while and then add all my new fluids. So kind of while this is apart, I'm doing sort of an overhaul. Um, something that's needed to be done for a few years. This little tool right here. <clears throat> this is just something I got, thank you Tim Albers, um, I got uh, from a old science lab and it's just a little piece of metal. You can see that side's a little paddle, that side's a little point. I use this all the time in almost everything I do, it's crazy. I, this is almost my most used tool. New oil, f <clears throat> new oil filter. Why not? I'll be here for a few minutes. But, is it going to turn over? That's, that's all I care about. Alright. I 
that's not good. Well, sometimes you have that. So this steering wheel has been rattling uh, my entire life. This is uh, this was rattling when I learned how to drive on it when I was six. Uh, so I'm gonna tune up these welds uh, with the angle grinder and then put some new spot welds in and see, uh, see how it does. All right. There we go. Simple as that. God, welding is cool. I can see myself getting in a lot of trouble with some welding. It's just so easy to combine metal. Solid. Another man would have drained the gas out of here before this process. What fun would that have been? Oh, that would have taken time and effort away from the fun part of Very project. little effort. I mean, really little effort. Well, well, my starter motor is, I've got a part, this little part here, this is called a, uh, a Bendix, and that is on order, and it got delayed by the storm, so I've actually borrowed this starter motor from uh, Ron Chipman down at Chippy's Fords. Uh, he works on specifically uh, 39 to 54, uh, preferably 8 ends, and these are all universal, but he, he was kind enough to loan me this. If you need any uh, restoration work done, he's your guy in Western Maine. That's it, it's all together. Let's see if we can get some, uh, get some fire out of it. Thank you, Chippy, for letting me use that. Uh, it's a wonderfully satisfying thing to get something that old back together and uh, hear it run and hear it run smoothly. Um, changing those fluids was a great thing to do. It's easy. Hopefully you can use this video as a little bit of a tutorial. Uh, it's really easy to split them. It's not that complicated if you need to get in there. Don't be overwhelmed by it. Don't be uh, kind of intimidated. Um, it's fun. It's fun to kind of see how these things are put together and made to last. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next week. Golly, it's cold. Mm -hmm.